a $7 million brute of a thing, developing 11,000 horsepower and capable of speeds of more than 100 kilometers an hour on the open sea. It looks like something out of a James Bond movie, sounds like something roaring down a runway bound for London. That, in fact, is what the Gentry Eagle was built for. Tom's indulgence is racing powerboats across the Atlantic Ocean, from New York to first landfall off England. One mile from Bishop's Rock, slicing through the waves at 48 knots, conditions perfect. Only an accident or mechanical breakdown could stop Tom Gentry now. The crew knew they'd done it with many hours to spare. The timekeeper on top of the lighthouse confirmed it. July the 26th, 1989 and Tom Gentry breaks the record for a transatlantic crossing. He'd set out from New York just 62 hours before, crossing the official starting line at Ambrose Light. Ahead of him, the cruel seas of the North Atlantic and a journey of more than 5,000 kilometres. Gentry had waited three weeks for conditions to be right, and they were. He was able to average speeds of 88 kilometres an hour and that included a mid-ocean refueling stop. What inspired you to go for the transatlantic record in the first place? It's a real challenge. Uh, that's 3,000 miles, you know, there's no pit stops uh, other than uh, our refueling, of course, but there's no place to, to do much other than just your best effort out there. And I thought that we uh, developed some interesting concepts and that they would work, and uh, they did. It helps make concepts work when you can spend around $7 million developing them. And that's what he invested on the Eagle. And this is what he got for his money. A bridge with all the paraphernalia of an ocean liner and an engine room which could power one. Two Mercedes-Benz engines, each developing 3,500 horsepower. A 4,500 horsepower gas turbine and steering by water jet. The Eagle was built with just one goal in mind, winning this, the Blue Raban Trophy that goes with the transatlantic record. It was held by the English eccentric Richard Branson, owner of Virgin Records, and a man au fait with what gentry would encounter. We're talking about very, very small boats. I mean, they look, they look big, but when you're, when you're actually out there in, in those big waves, they're extremely small. It is back-breaking, um, and it, you know, it gets the kidneys, it gets the backs, it's, it's, it's not very pleasant. Um, and there's an awful lot that can go wrong. But nothing did go wrong for Gentry. When he motored into harbour on the Scilly Isles, he'd slashed an amazing 18 hours, 23 minutes off Branson's record. They really romped home. He's in fair and square, I'm afraid. This being the Scilly Isles, Branson offered champagne. And a welcome to English waters for the Hawaiian who'd humiliated him. But Branson isn't giving up, not yet. He is among a number of syndicates developing prototypes to challenge Gentry's record. This craft, the Atlantic Sprinter, is expected to make an attempt in July of next year with world land speed record holder Richard Noble at the helm. It's going to turn into the biggest marine race of our time. There are three boats being prepared now to, to do the fastest ever surface crossing of the Atlantic. And all of them are very, very high-tech. I think probably ours is maybe the most high-tech of all, in the sense we're using a very new hull with, of course, the RB211 engine, which has never been used in a boat before. And it's going to turn out to be really, you know, what we've been looking for for a long time, the race of a lifetime. Are you going to try and break your own transatlantic record? Oh, no, I don't think so. But uh, you never know. Uh, we're creeping up on 500 years of uh, American history here with the Italians who are kind of messing around out there, and there's some other folks. Uh, and we've been fooling around with some designs, but uh, you know, I don't think we'll we want to break our own record, but uh, uh, you know, if it looks like it's in danger, we might do something. I'm not sure. <laughs> Those Italians messing round are messing round in this, the $11 million Atlantic Challenger, a 90-ton vessel purpose-built to claim that bit of history Tom Gentry was talking about. This is the Hales Cup, a trophy with a history as old as the America's Cup. For the first half of this century, it changed hands regularly as passenger liners vied to be fastest in making the Atlantic crossing between Bishop's Rock and Ambrose Light. The record remains three days and ten hours. 
The Italians, with one paying passenger, as rules specify, and a crew seemingly hell-bent on blowing themselves up, plan to do it in this floating fuel tanker. So we start off this trip like, uh, looking like a submarine, sort of with, uh, with the boat almost awash, and then at the end we're like a flying boat because there's, all, there's no fuel and the boat's light and going very, very fast. Gentry's record was with a fuel stop, and talking with him you get the impression he won't allow that effort to be belittled. There's a lot of people somehow interested in that uh, uh, crossing, uh, and I can see why, but uh, I, I feel that we had uh, uh, good equipment, uh, we had a great crew. Uh, it's not something for the amateur to go. You can say that again. Gentry pours millions into power boating. He built this craft to claim the world racing water speed record of 237 kilometers an hour. And he travels the world to race on the hydroplane circuit. He makes his own cable television programs to promote power boating. Tom Gentry is now 59, but he has no thought of retiring, either from business or boating. On water, he's been a world champion and held world records. Can one day we expect to see his high profile in an even higher profile water sport?